Good afternoon and welcome to today's Mindful Moment webinar. My name is Evan Judge and I'll be talking with uh, some of our health and wellbeing nutritional team this afternoon. And today we're actually talking about uh, exercise for mental health. So really good topic. Uh, really glad that you are able to join us. And um, yeah, we'll get straight into it because this is a good one. So as I said, um, today's panel is uh, Katrina and Tatiana from our wellbeing team. Uh, Katrina, if we start with a hello from you, how are you doing today? Hello, yeah, not too bad, thank you. Considering I have been in isolation, um, I'm doing okay. Tomorrow is my last day, so fingers crossed I stay negative and I'll be able to have enjoy a long weekend away at the weekend. So but yeah, I'm doing okay, thank you. <laughs> Good, I feel like a lot of us are in isolation of some sort at the moment. Tatiana, how are you doing? Hello, thanks Evan, I'm really well, thank you. Um, really pleased to jump on this call today and just have a chat about exercise and mental health. I think it's a really important topic which we should all be a bit more aware of. So yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> Pleasure. So as um, as we said, yeah, we're looking at mental uh, exercise for mental health. And before we put anyone off, uh, we're, we're, we're not just talking about going for a 5k run every morning or uh, getting into the gym every day. But we're looking at ways in which we can maybe mix it up and do some sort of exercise each day or uh, at least a few times a week just to contribute to our, our mental health because we know from past webinars that we've done that it definitely does contribute to uh, a good mental health and well-being. So Katrina, my first question's going to come to you if you don't mind and that's going to be obviously from the last time we spoke um we know that you kind of really focus a bit more on the the physical health and the exercise bit so what would you what would you say why does why does exercise contribute to our, our mental health or affect our mood so much um yeah so very good question to start off with so i'll just begin with the government guidelines for the amount of physical activity that we are supposed to be doing so it is recommended that we do 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week this could include a brisk walk or like a leisurely bike ride or it's recommended to do 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity a week and um, so this could include jogging or perhaps going for a faster bike ride or skipping rope for example. It is also recommended to do strength training twice a week and trying to reduce our sedentary behaviours um, and these guidelines are there to basically promote good and overall health and well-being so not only for our physical health but our mental health as well and now a lot of people tend to think that we need to be doing quite vigorous intensity activity to benefit our mental health but that's actually not the case we don't need to be hitting the gym or like you said going on 5k runs each morning it really is any form of movement which will benefit our mental health so whether that be dancing stretching doing some housework and so on um, and obviously if you are able to as well it's recommended to get out in nature nature has been seen to boost our mood boost our energy levels helps us to sleep better reduce feelings of depression and anxiety as well so what i would recommend is that you get out for at least 10 minutes minutes a day do something to move a little bit more and also try and focus on reducing the sedentary behaviors because i think that's a big one within our job roles that perhaps we are sat at a computer screen for quite a while or perhaps in the evening we're feeling quite tired and lethargic we just flop in front of the sofa instead try and do something try and break that time up so whether it be going to get yourself a drink or a snack going to the toilet just going for a quick wonder um, can really benefit and our mental health positively um, and obviously improve our mood and, and energy levels as well. So uh, Katrina just can you remind us of those those government or those recommended exercises again just just in case people missed it? Yeah so it's recommended to do 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week so it could be brisk walking, a leisurely bike ride or perhaps dancing, double tennis and things like that or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity. So um, jogging, a fast bike ride, aerobics, skipping rope, for example. Um, so those 
for the guidelines. On top of that as well, it's recommended to do two lots of strength activities. So whether that is lifting weights or carrying heavy bags when we're doing shopping or mowing the lawn, for example. And the final one is to try and reduce sedentary behaviours. So reducing the time that we're actually spent sitting or laying um, to break up that time by getting up, standing up, marching, doing a few steps um, as well. Great, perfect. Thank you very much. So uh, Tatiana, I just thinking about the impact of exercise and activity has on us, how can this positively affect our work life and how can our team look to incorporate more activity into their working day and what can they do differently maybe? Yeah, so as Katrina mentioned, obviously exercise is really effective in improving our mood and when we feel better, we're going to be working better and more effectively. Um, so like I said, it's really important that we try and increase our movement throughout the day. It can be really hard to try and find the energy and effort to incorporate exercise at the end of the day. Once you've been on your feet all day or you've been super busy, the last thing you want to do is head to the gym. So we need to be thinking about how we can constantly move a bit more throughout the day. So as Katrina's mentioned, if possible, we need to be getting outside. Um, this doesn't have to be for long periods of time. It can literally be a short 10 minute burst. Um, Again, this gets us out in nature, which can be really beneficial for our mental health. If you can, maybe walking or cycling to work can be a really good way to incorporate more exercise and movement into your day. Or if you get the bus to work, you could get off a stop early. Even if you drive to work, you can park in the furthest car parking space away from the building and you're just increasing that tiny bit of movement to increase your mental health and everything. Um, if you're working from home and you don't commute, I'd encourage you to maybe wake up 10 minutes earlier, head out for a walk. This is something I try and do every morning, even if it's just a quick loop around the block, I take my cup of tea with me, plug in a head, uh, podcast. Um, so that's a really good way to start the day off as well. Um, if you're on phone calls and you don't need to be on camera or taking notes, you can also plug in your headphones and wander around the house just to increase that movement. Um, again, might not always be possible getting out for your lunchtime walk is really great to increase your physical activity but can also really help to clear your head and help you feel a bit more focused for the afternoon um and then another thing i would say was youtube is a really great resource you can literally type in 5 10 15 minute workout depending on the time that you have and there are hundreds of videos which will come up and you can just try these out throughout any point of your day and then Finally, I'd say it might sound really silly, but things like jogging on the spot while you're waiting for the kettle to boil or doing some squats while you're watching TV all counts as your physical activity and can really like release those endorphins, make you feel a bit better and increase the amount of movement that we're doing. And it's sort of just about finding what works for you, what you can fit into your day um, and what you enjoy doing. Well, that's great. That's very helpful. I mean, I have seen a few times on calls. I'm not going to name these people, but a few times on calls, I've seen people get up and start walking around the room because they've got very little else to do. And they're just listening to the call, obviously, but still walking around. And obviously they're comfortable because they're not turning off their camera. And they, <laughs> we know why they're doing it. So I guess <clears throat> the next question will be to both of you is to what what are you personally doing to get a little bit more ex exercise or activity into your daily routine and fit, about, fit around that uh, that whole work life balance? How, how are you managing to incorporate that first? So um, if we come back to you, Tatiana, first. Yeah, so as I've mentioned before, and I think the team can definitely vouch for me on this one, I am always popping out for my quick walks throughout the day just to get some steps in. If I've got brain fog, I'll be like, right, I'm going for a quick loop around the block. Um, I also try and sign up for gym classes after work and I like lay out my clothes already so that I have to go um, or I try and drag along a friend, which does make it a lot easier and you have that accountability to make you go. So that's how I try and do it. Great. And Katrina, anything from you in terms of how you're incorporating it into your, your daily routine? Yeah, mine's very similar to Tatiana, really. I think we both make sure we get out for that lunchtime walk. It's probably our number one rule. We know at one o'clock or 12.30, we're logging off for 10, 15 minutes just to make sure we go out and get our steps in. So I think it really helps as well that both of us in the same team enjoy the same thing as well and that we both encourage each other to do it. And I think the same should be going for everybody. We should all be trying to encourage people to get out on a lunchtime walk 
or when they end their day. Um, personally, I'm not a massive fan of the gym, however, but I have got into running quite regularly and um, I signed up for a half marathon. So I do try and run three to four times a week. And I have actually joined a running club instead of a gym, which I find amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, didn't think I would. But yeah, it's obviously it is that committing to showing up with other people as well, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, and the only other thing that I try and do really is, as we've mentioned, breaking up that sedentary time. So it's really embedded into my routine now. I go and get a coffee at the same time every day. I tend to go to the toilet at the same time every day, get my breakfast, my lunch, everything. Just making sure every hour I'm sort of getting up to do something as well and um, to try and add it in, do some squats, like we say, on phone calls. If you don't have to have the camera on, I do try and do that as well. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to keep with you if that's OK. And thinking about the mindful, uh, the mindful moment uh, document that we've sending out and that and that toolbox talk, um, what would you say is your one tip uh, for people? Yeah, so I think my top tip is just to find something that you enjoy. Like I said, I've recently got into running. I've not always enjoyed running, but for some people as well, it might not be enjoyable. Um, and obviously, if we don't enjoy it, we're going to see it more as a chore. We're not going to experience the same mental health benefits as someone else, for example. Um, I think it is around trial and error. You're not going to enjoy everything that you do, but we are quite lucky that we do tend to have free opportunities, taster sessions, which we can sort of go to um, before perhaps signing up to something. So it is trial and error and find something that you enjoy. So it's the, not a chore and you experience all the excellent mental health benefits alongside exercise. Great. And Tatiana, have you got a top tip? Yeah, I think my biggest top tip would probably be get your family or friends involved. So it's that social accountability again. If you've got somebody else doing it with you, you're more likely to go on and do it. So could you sign up for a new gym class with a friend? Um, or there's loads of group activities that are starting up again um, post pandemic. So things like Park Run, um, which is run across the UK and lots of local parks. And it's um, like a, I think it's every Saturday morning and they try and encourage people to get into running and try and do a 5K and it's all ages and abilities. So that's really something good to sign up for. Um, or instead of going to the pub with your friend or going for a coffee, why not suggest to go for a dog walk? Um, or just when you're out with the family, particularly now that it's the school summer holidays, why not just head to the park, take a frisbee, a football, do whatever, but just take other people with you. And also that increases the mental health benefits, too, um, because you're spending time with loved ones. Um, and that's always really beneficial. Great, thank you. And um, I guess my one is because I am who I am and I work in health and safety and food safety. Um, I enjoy the cleaning process, so I kind of incorporate some sort of household chore into into my daily routine. So I break up all my my household cleaning and stuff like that during the week. And then half an hour after I finish work each day, I do some cleaning, which I thoroughly enjoy. It helps me take out all my frustrations from the day. So that's that would be my top tip is look at ways in which you can do more vigorous cleaning. That would be the, the way to get some exercise in. Um, uh, thank you both for joining us. And before we before we uh, finish off, I just wanted to um, share, share some of those uh, useful contacts or useful websites to visit. So um, Tatiana mentioned already Park Run, um, but you've also got Activity Alliance, um, which is a website which helps with uh, supporting disabled people become more active. But you've also got the NHS Live Well website, which has loads of resources and tips on getting more active and being more active in general. So go and check those ones out. If you're stuck for ideas, there's loads of great resources out there. Um, and then the other thing I just want to do before we finish off is just remind you all again that obviously we've got the Mindful Moment Toolbox talk on exercise for mental health. So you can share that with your teams and encourage your teams to to get a bit more active where, where possible. Um, and then we've got the great resources that uh, Tatiana and Katrina kind of contribute to a lot on the YouTube page and the Instagram. So go and check those out. There's loads of great stuff on there. And then in terms of uh, mental health, obviously we've got loads of mental health first aiders in the business now. We're close to over 100. So um, Please, if you are struggling with anything, uh, please reach out to either any of the people on the screen there or any of the mental health first aiders that you know in your parts of the business. 
Um, and yeah, just let let us know what's going on and we'll try and help as much as possible. Obviously, Tatiana and Katrina are both also mental health first aiders now. So you can reach out to them if you want to talk to somebody outside of your unit. Um, and then again, you if you want to reach out about anything nutrition and well-being, uh, you've got the nutrition and well-being inbox. So it's ess.wellness at compass-group.co.uk drop them an email, uh, they'll be sure to get back to you fairly quickly. Um, and if they don't have the answer, they'll go to the people that do have the answers. So please feel free to ask them the questions. And if you haven't already, you can sign up to the wellness newsletter, which um, if you email ESS, the, the, the wellness team inbox, you'll be able to um, get that sent directly to you each month. This month's issue was really good. Um, I think we talked quite a bit about uh, activity and getting out and about and top tips for summer well-being so some loads of great articles there so if you if you are looking for something for the for the summer holidays uh, have a look at that and then finally just wanted to thank you all for joining us we had a great turnout in terms of numbers of attendees this this week so thank you all for joining thank you all for listening and our next one will be on dealing with anxiety and i'm very pleased that uh, the ess md mark webster has confirmed that he'll be joining us for the panel on that one. So it will be a great discussion with Mark and the panel. Thanks very much. Look after yourselves and look after each other. Thank you.